greeting students i hope you are all doing well today we'll have a class on environmental law and the topic that we are going to cover is polluter space principle specifically this is meant for blb 6m and the llb 4m students so before getting on to the topic what we need to understand is the basic definition of polluter space principle Polluter space principle is a commonly accepted practice that those who produce pollution should bear the cost of managing it to prevent damage to human health or the environment. For instance, a factory that produces a potentially poisonous substance as a byproduct of its activities is usually held responsible for its safe disposal. So, those who pollute the environment should also bear the liability or the responsibility of managing the pollution caused by them to prevent damage to environment residing humans or the ecosystem too so anybody at the end of the day who causes damage to the environment by producing any toxic chemicals or hazardous waste should be held responsible where they should have the liability to not only dispose it of safely so the so that it does not cause any damage to the environment itself but at the same point of time it somehow if they end up damaging the environment or polluting the ecosystem or the atmosphere itself they should not only compensate for it but at the same point of time they should also restore the quality of the environment that they have degraded through their work now what we tend to see is the basics of polluter space principle PPP or polluter space principle is also known as extended producer responsibility or EPR a concept that was described by Thomas Lindvist for the Swedish government in 1990 the credit for popularizing the PPP for the first time goes to organization for economic cooperation and development that is OECD which OECD which comes under the purview of United Nation now we'll try to understand polluter space principle from the national or the indian context the supreme court of india interpreted ppp as the absolute liability for harm to the environment extended not only to compensate the victims of pollution but also the cost of restoration of the environmental degradation so what we tend to understand by this that anybody who is causing the pollution in the environment itself itself should be held responsible or he should hold the absolute liability where the person who is causing such a damage to the environment itself should not only compensate to the victim of the pollution but at the same point of time he has to pay all the cost to restore the quality or the standard of environment that he has degraded by his heinous act so hum log do tarike ka point dekhte hain ki koi person who has fallen prey to any kind of pollution he has to be compensated by the person who is doing him wrong by causing the pollution and at the same point of time he will be held responsibility where he has to also pay for the cost to restore the environmental degradation that he is causing through his act secondly the environmental protection act 1986 empowers the government to take all such measures as it deems fit for the purpose of protecting and improving the quality of environment so the environmental protection act empowers the government that means gives the power to the government where the government has all the power or all the uh, power to take all the measures as it deems fit as it sense to fit that he might take any steps to protect and improve the quality of the environment as they might think or as it may be thirdly the polluter space principle has been incorporated in the european community treaty 2 and this is where we tend to see polluter space principles exercise in the international dominion article 102 sorry article 102 rule 2 states the need for prevention action secondly the need for environmental damage to rectify that source and polluter space should pay PPP holds a prominent place in Rio Declaration of 1992 that was held in Rio de Janeiro Brazil itself 
The principle 16 of the declaration proclaims that national authorities should endeavor to promote the internationalization of environmental cause and use of instruments. So here, principle 16 of Rio de declaration always tends to promote that national authorities should always promote the internationalization of environmental cost, where polluter space principle should play a very vital role and somehow polluter space principle should always be promoted and all the instruments to safeguard the polluter space principle should be taken care of, where if any damage is being caused to the environment itself should be taken care of by making the person who is causing such a damage by making him pay the compensation and also he should be held responsibility uh, he should be held responsible for the damage he is causing and the all these necessary steps or the immediate steps should be executed to restore the degradation of the environment itself secondly ppp should be taken into account and polluters should bear the cost of pollution abhi hum log yahi baat kar rahe the ki koi bhi banda agar aise pollute karta hai to he should be held responsible at the same point of time and the, and he should also bear the cost of pollution that which we have discussed when we were discussing the same point in the indian context too thirdly proper due regard should be given to public interest without distorting international trade and in investment see when we discuss the third point what we tend to see is public interest plays a very important role here and without distorting international trade and investment the pollution uh, pollution should be kept intact because you cannot execute international trade and investment by disrupting the balance of the pollution uh, sorry for of the environment the environment the quality of the environment is always kept intact the balance of the environment is always kept intact and by maintaining the equilibrium one needs to always carry on their international trade and investment so the public interest should always be kept on a positive note and at the same point of time keeping the balance of the international uh, uh, environment itself one should always carry on their international trade and investment lastly but not the least what we tend to see is twofold liability there are twofold liability or twofold responsibility that we tend to have one is compensation to the victims of the pollution and another is the ecological restoration this is this is what we have been discussing when we are discussing indian context and international context from the polluter space principles point of view firstly is anybody me fir se keh raha hu anybody koi bhi agar pollute karta hai he should be held liable for the pollution he is causing and at the same point of time he should also compensate to the victims of the pollution to the harm he is causing to the person residing in the environment itself secondly he should also pay for the cost and somehow should restore the ecological balance of the atmosphere of the ecosystem that he is disrupting last but not the least is limitation although polluter space principle has its own remedies has its own way of making uh, maintaining the standards of the environment itself but at the same point of time polluter space principle is limited to the sense that it might be applied only to the remedial stage so it can only be applied only after the pollution has taken place so once the pollution has taken place it is used for the remedial source this is it is used for the compensational means where the person who is causing such a heinous act who is disrupting the quality of the environment is made to pay the compensation to the person he is causing damage to and at the same point of time the ecological order or the ecological restoration happens to take place so one may say that it is a kind of a uh, technique where the pay and pollute as it is written down under the not tends to be executed so this is all about polluter space principle thank you class